Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of plate code of weekly contest 361. Uh, a medium problem with a low accuracy. Okay, let's see what it is asking us to do. So you are given a zero index integer array nums and a couple of more integers modulo and k. Okay, your task is to find the count of sub arrays that are interesting. Now, what is an interesting sub array? So a sub array L to R is interesting if the following condition holds true. What is that condition? Let count be the number of indices i in the range L to R such that nums of i mod, when you take mod with this modulo, it comes out to be k. So whatever is the count of element, again take mod with modulo and that should come out to be k. So if this is true for a sub array, that sub array is interesting. Return an integer denoting the count of interesting sub arrays, okay? What does it mean, right? So 3, 2, 4 is my example, right? Now, let me generate all these sub arrays. So 3, 3, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4. Then 2, 2, 4. And then at last we'll have 4. So if I take, if I take, uh, you know, I have to take mod with 2. Remainder should be 1. So if I take mod with 2, remainder is 1. So that means, yes, I have one element like this. Here I have only one element because only 3 is valid. If you take 2 mod 2, the remainder is 0, but you want 1, right? Similarly here, this is valid. This is not valid this is not valid so count of element is one which is valid right for this one again you get remainder as zero so zero elements are valid for this one again zero elements are valid and for four again zero elements are valid right so now for each server we has we have counted how many elements are valid the validity condition is this right how many elements are valid in each server and an element is valid if you take modulo with if you take mod with modulo and you get a value k okay now you have this count now again take mod with mod low what do you get you get one that means this sub array is valid similarly count is one take mod with two again you get one and that that is what you want again this is valid this is also valid this is not valid not valid not valid so there are three sub arrays which are valid three three two and three two four so three three two and three two four two step process that means in every sub array first find out the valid elements and once you get the count of elements in a sub array, again take mod with the given value. That means take the mod with modulo. And if the remainder comes out to be k, then then, then that sub array is interesting, right? Similarly, let's take this one. 3, 1, 9, 6. Let's generate all the sub arrays. So 3, 3, 1, 3, 1, 9, 3, 1, 9, 6. Then you have 1, you have 1, you have 1, 9, 6. You have 9, you have 9, 6, and then you have 6. Now, I have to take mod with 3 of every element. Remainder should be 0. So is this valid? Yes. 1 element valid. 1 element valid. 2 elements valid, right? 3 and 9 are valid here. Because even for 9, if you take mod with 3, remainder is 0. Here, 3 elements are valid. 0 valid. 1 valid. 2 valid. 1 valid. 2 valid. 1 valid. Great. So I have the count of valid elements in every sub array. Now, again, I'll take mod with 3 of those counts and the remainder should be 0. So for this one, is the remainder 0? No. 1 mod 3 is 1, not 0. What about this one? Is this 0? No. 1 mod 3 is not 0. 2 mod 3, not 0. 3 mod 3, yes, that is 0. Okay. This is 0. So 0 mod 3 again, this is also valid, not valid, not valid, not valid, not valid. So there are two sub arrays which are valid. Which are the sub arrays? 3, 1, 9, 6 and 1. 3, 1, 9, 6 and 1. Okay. I hope the problem statement is clear, right? What it is asking us to do? Two step process. First, find the valid elements in every sub array. Now, for each sub array, find the count of elements which were valid. And again, take mod with that value and see whether you get the required remainder or not, right? This is what the problem statement is, right? Now, let's move step by step, right? The first thing is you find the valid elements, right? So for a given array, find the valid, valid elements. This is valid, not valid, valid, valid. Okay. Now, Obviously, I cannot generate all these sub arrays because the range is large, right? I cannot generate all these sub arrays. So rather, what I can do is, if I, if I can somehow convert it into sort of a prefix array or something like that. So why I'm converting it, I'll show you that as well. So number of elements from zero to I. So till here, I have one valid element. Till here, I have one, two and three. What is this saying? This, this says that A of I gives you the count of elements which are valid from 0 to i right this is what 
this particular prefix array means right prefix array means okay now once you do it once you do it just see what we need to do right also obviously we need to take mod right we need to take mod of this count so we can take mod there itself like for example these are the count of elements in each prefix array so what i can do i, I can take mod with three so taking one mod three one one two and zero so this is the final prefix array that you get i've just taken mod why i have taken mod because ultimately i have to deal with mod right that i, I the count of um, valid elements in a sub array I have to take its mod. So why not take mod here itself? So now you just have to do the subtraction part, right? Now what happens, this problem reduces to a very standard problem. What is that problem? That given a prefix array now, okay? You have to find the number of sub arrays satisfying a condition, satisfying a particular condition, right? Now, let's see some of the more things, right? I'm standing here, right? I'm standing here. This information says that if I take mod of count of elements from 0 to i, right, count of, if I take mod of, you know, count of valid elements from 0 to i, I get 2, right. Now, the required remainder is k, but from 0 to i, I am getting a remainder as 2. So, ideally, if I can get 2 minus k mod m as the remainder, if I know, if I know how many prefix arrays are are ending with this remainder then that will give me the count why that will give me the count just taking an example this is your prefix array you want to find how many sub arrays are valid which are ending here right and suppose the remainder that you get here is x but what is the remainder that you want for valid sub arrays that is k so x minus k mod this is the required remainder that means whatever are the sub arrays which have this remainder whatever the prefix array so suppose there are some sub arrays which are ending here okay which have this as the remainder so that means from here to here this forms a valid sub array this forms a valid sub array so to understand it better just consider it like this that if you know the sum of elements from this to from here to here right a required sum is uh, suppose k and you have got a sum of x so you just subtract these two to get the number of sub arrays right so you say that okay how many arrays are there with x minus k as the sum how many prefix arrays are there which end here right you just add those because the after these sub arrays whatever the starting index after those and this is the ending index this is the count of sub arrays right so this is how we solve this problem this is how we solve this problem so two step process ultimately this reduces to a very very standard problem right let me show you the code uh, to get a better feel of this also in these cases you also take a take an edge case otherwise um, your solution will fail what is that edge case if this is the array okay first thing first thing first let me again draw a diagram to show you one extra thing because maybe if you are seeing it for the first time uh, you don't know it look this is my array suppose this is my prefix array suppose the sum of elements still here is capital x okay and uh, the total sum i want is s okay so i do s minus x now that is let's assume y and there is a sub array whose prefix sum is y okay so what does this mean this means that if this is the index j this is index i then a valid sub array in this case will be from j plus 1 to i getting it from j plus 1 because till j the element is included after this only it becomes a valid array right now to tackle this suppose a valid sub array is a prefix array i mean elements from 0 to index i is also a valid array right so to include that count what you do you say that the number of sub arrays whose sum is equals to 0 is 1 which is that sub array you when you do not take any element this is the this is the edge case that you add right right so let me show you this is the map that i have taken keep a track of that okay for this particular model how many sub arrays are there how many prefix sub arrays are there right the number of elements i have this is the answer this is the edge case i was talking about that for zero you have one sub array when you do not take any element right now this is the prefix remainder i goes from one to n what is the prefix remainder whatever is the prefix remainder plus if the current number is also valid add one else else add zero Okay. No need to create a prefix array, even a single, you know, value will be sufficient here, right? 
so this is the remainder that i have for the current prefix array from 0 to i okay what is my target remainder look i want i want it to be k i have got prefix remainder so i subtract it now this value can also be negative so i just add m because i'm taking mod with him right i'm taking mod with him so again standard mathematics right this is the target remainder now answer plus equals to see how many prefix arrays are there which have this as the property this is the prefix sum prefix mod sum target sum if the whatever is the count just add it so get or default if there is something add it else add zero and then after you do this add the increment the count for prefix remainder so map dot put prefix remainder just increment the count finally you return the answer right so it's a two-step process to reduce it to a very standard problem right to a very standard problem um and i i think most of the people where they failed was because of these two this condition this line that you they did not know how to calculate the target remainder right once you know it uh, you can do it easily just whenever you're not able to understand it just you know try to map it with a very standard problem that okay i want the number of sub areas with a particular sum then what would i do right so the same solution will work here obviously you need to tweak it a little bit but 99 percent of the things will be same right that is what how you map the problems uh, so a given problem can be mapped to a standard problem right this is how you come up with the observations right uh, so yeah that's it for this solution i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any issues related to the solution please mention that in the comment section i'll try to revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye